Well, howdy, 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 dear and senior citizens here, greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends, and welcome to this another brand new day. Yes, indeed, a brand new day, and hope he smokes. Is it getting warm? Yesterday, it was very bright, very sunny all day, and this morning, it's probably going to be very bright, very sunny. So, oh boy. <clears throat> and the heat, of course, it's gotten quite warm here. Oh boy, even just wearing a shirt like this is almost too much. Thumbs up for that. <laughs> uh, when I was a child, and I lived in Washington State still, about 200 miles away from my, where I live right now. Well, 200, so probably closer to 300. Anyway though, point being, when I was a child, it snowed every winter. Even 15 years ago, <clears throat> it would still snow frequently and sometimes quite deeply and this last year uh it snowed once and it didn't stick and that was it for the winter and now it's turning into summer so yay but still point being it's going to be a day it's going to hopefully be a nice day probably going to be wildfires galore all through the united states and world this summer so Yay. Anyway, though, not a ton of things have happened since yesterday, but some things I have wanted to talk about. Like one thing that happened two days ago now, and I wanted to talk about it because it is shame, but I am also a human being, and we also live in a physical world where nature is red in tooth and claw. If you've ever watched any nature videos, life is brutal and short. Ugh. <clears throat> so, a couple years back, I made the... What is the word? I made the decision that I was going to try not to kill anymore. I mean, I don't kill people. I've never killed a person. I don't kill animals on purpose. It's largely just insects and stuff, and insects and arachnids and other small things like that don't want to die. They don't want to be crushed. They don't want to be poisoned or anything like that. So I have been trying to do my best to just relocate insects and such instead of smushing them because I just want to stop killing. So I've been doing pretty good. I mean, I'm a human being. There are some times I strike out and smack a bug without thinking about it. There are other times that I have had bugs run in my way. I was smoothing out wrinkles on my bed like a year or so ago, and a little gangly leg spider ran out. And before I could realize from what was happening and stop my body, I smoothed out a wrinkle right over the top of it. And, well, it was just a tiny speck of protein, so it smeared. So, it happens. The past six months or so, <clears throat> I have had a lot of tiny moths in this room. Now, I have seen other videos of other people where they have had these tiny moths flying around. I have gone walkies. These moths have been everywhere. So, it's not strange and unusual that there would be little moths, but it started to be they were breeding in here. Because I've got hamster food, I've got hamster bedding, I've got cat food, there's little bits of organic detritus like that. And so, I've had moths. And I haven't killed them, because I don't want to kill. If they've just been flying in my face, I'll bat them out of the way, but I haven't worried about it. The other day, I got up, turned around. <clears throat> it was like 8 o'clock at night. And there were like 8 to 10 moths filling the air back behind me. I snapped. I lost it. I said, I don't like to kill, but this is just too many moths. Because I don't like them flying into my face. I don't like them getting into my stuff that's like food that I'm going to be eating. Things like that. 
you know, because I'll bring up a bowl of something and then I'll take the bowl back down to the sink in the kitchen when I'm done. But while I'm here with a, an open bowl of something to eat, I don't want a moth flying into it. So I said, that's it, that's it, that's it. And I lost it. And I got some tissues and I went on a moth slaughtering spree. And yeah, there are even some moths that I caught, you know, in the act. And reproduction among insects is different, you know, largely in many cases from reproduction among mammals and stuff. You know, they're not like people. There's none of that going on. If you're a moth, you have, and some other flying insects, you have one moth fly, facing that way, one moth fly, facing that way. They sort of interface in the middle, and they, there's not. It's probably mildly pleasurable as a bug because you're fulfilling your genetic imperative, but I can't imagine it's altogether pleasurable. But they were procreating on the door, and so they were gone. <coughs> And then while I was throwing tissues into my garbage down here, because I have a box, a cat food box that I use as the little garbage container, and then when it gets full, of course, I just dump it into a trash bag. But, point being, I was throwing the moth-filled tissue, and this spider in a web down in the container started to run. And it was like, I, ugh, you're not a moth, but no, no, too much right now. And so that got swept up and the spider was gone. Like I say, all together from in here and out there, uh, probably good eight to 10 moths I took out. There have still been them flitting around and I'm gonna be taking care of those. But, oh, it was such a massacre. <laughs> uh, and the thing is, of course, when the moths procreate they lay eggs and then there's larvae and I don't know what they're eating or where they are like I said there's little bits of organic detritus because you know I, I feed my cat I feed my hamster there's a cat box there's all sorts of little things like that I eat food you know no matter how clean you try to be you're gonna drop crumbs so there's organic bits and pieces everywhere so there's stuff and I've had little moth larvae crawling around on lots of stuff. You know, I'll see them dangling off of things like here on my front keyboard stuff. I've had them dangling off of my webcam. I've found them dangling here and there. So hopefully there'll be less of that. But the, the damage didn't stop there because the, just yesterday, I think it was, I was sitting down from morning time and I turned and dangling right here above the space heater was one of those larger gangly leg spiders. But inside of its jaws, it had clenched one of the moth larvae. So I was stuck, caught on the horns of a conundrum. The unwritten contract between myself and spiders is you don't get into my living area, you don't crawl on me, you don't do something where I am, and please, live and eat. So on the one hand, the spider had a larvae and was going to take care of that. On the other hand, no, you don't come dropping down where I am. So yeah, the spider went away along with its prey. Hopefully, the massacre will stop soon. I want to go back to not, not killing insects again, but there's just been so many of them. And then, of course, last night, because the night prior, I had been trying to sleep and it was so hot because of my meds, my foam bed, I have one fan in my bedroom and it wasn't enough. So last night, after looking online, trying to order fans from the local Walmart and just saying, oh, I can't do it this way, it's ridiculous, I decided I'm gonna walk to Walmart. It's been a long time since I've walked to Walmart, but I walked to the hospital, which is like, if it's 
six miles round trip from here to the to Walmart and back. It is five miles round trip from here to the hospital and back. So I walked to Walmart to go and see what fans they had up there. And it was a good thing I checked, and it was a good thing I checked when I did. They wouldn't have had anything in stock to purchase online anyway, because when I was there, there were only display fans that were large enough to do anything. They had boxes for little desktop fans, but they don't do anything. So there were no fans left, except they had a display of box fans for sale. And they were all gone except for one. There was one fan that was not a desktop fan. One in the entire store. So I grabbed that one. So I walked there at the right time. Who knows? Two minutes longer, it may have been gone. So I got that fan. I have a position so the one fan blows from the foot of my bed up towards my face. This one is on the side and blows just over my legs to help keep them cool. I have to do some work and I'm going to be adjusting things because right now it hits the edge of my sheet in such a way that it wants to just flump and blow the sheet all the way off of my body. So I have to keep it tucked underneath the body pillow on that side to, to keep it from flying up and off. But it worked and I slept because it was blowing the air and it kept me cooler. Thumbs up for that. I'm still not sleeping well any better. I mean, I still woke up early because of pain. Just lying there hurts. Again, one of the issues is when I sleep, I don't move. I lay there like I'm dead. Normal people, when you sleep, if you hurt, if something bothers you, you come up to partial awareness and you move. You'll roll if it hurts enough, or you'll move part of your body and then you'll sink back down into full sleep. I don't. I fall down into sleep and then I don't move. If something hurts, I have to wake up to full wakefulness and then move and then sink back all the way into full sleep again. Otherwise, I lay there like I'm dead. And that's one of the reasons why it hurts, because something hurts and I don't move until it really, really hurts. <sighs> life is life. But it was good. I got the fan, I was able to sleep, and that was good. Trying to think of what else I have on here. One of the things I have noticed, and I've been talking with Russian timing as best I can with the entire situation that they are having to go through, but not my, not my life, not my world, not my place to talk about it. But since they take some form of ADH med as well, I noticed, I noticed, I talked about how I do want to get a blood pressure thing so I can check my blood pressure. I don't have one. My wife had one. It was appropriated by my brother-in-law. But I've been having headaches. And even though my pulse is still at 60, that doesn't mean my blood pressure is not going up. I am on a stimulant. Methylphenidate hydrochloride is a stimulant. So I've been getting headaches, but at the same time, I was told, don't worry, they generally fade from the person who is taking these others. And I had, in my previous chair, it kept falling backwards. So I had to, from this way back position, hold my head upward like this so that I could see properly. That hurt my neck a lot. When I sleep and such in my chair, and I don't mean to, but I do, that hurts my neck a lot. I have terrible posture at some times. And sometimes terrible posture sometimes. And I will shrimp badly, or I'll be leaned down so that my posture is bad and my neck is having to pull forward. So I think the pulled forward of my neck along with the hunched up shoulder things to use my keyboard and mouse combined with the new stimulant 
Oh boy, stress headaches. So hopefully that will fade soon. I'd still like to get a blood pressure checker. I mean, beforehand, my blood pressure has always been like 113 over 60. But it's been a couple years since I've had it checked. So it would probably be a good idea. And I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments in my community tab. I'm going to go through and thank 20 to 25 people, or however many people, left comments. And I'm going to thank them for having left a comment. I am not reading the comments right now. I'm going to go through and read them afterward. Thumbs up each one I do. Answer as many as my executive dysfunction will allow. But it's, let's see, I forgot my... <laughs> Methylphenidate hydrochloride does not stop me from occasionally losing my train of thought like I just did. I am still a human being. If I mispronounce a username, no disrespect is intended, as stated. You know, I am also an American English speaker, and even though I count in American Sign Language on the fingers of this hand with my depression, fibro, uh, now treated ADHD and such, you know, I still forget. I'm getting better. Hopefully, but I still forget. So let me call it my Chrome. Because, yeah, I use Chrome. Ugh. Ice Damon, thumbs up and thank you. A Banana, greatly appreciated. Linksy, thumbs up and thank you. Big Dick Bazuso, thumbs up and thank you. Counselor, greatly appreciated. Old Ode Malik Idris, greatly appreciated. Tall Dude, 123, I hope I answered your question in the comment. Austin Adams, greatly appreciated. Endless breadsticks. <laughs> I like the way you've got that spilled. Very cool. Nando Rice Charuti, thumbs up and thank you very much. And good to see you in the comments. It is a very good thing. Kanisha Patricia Togas, thumbs up. Gamezilla, greatly appreciated. Seaside, thumbs up and thank you. Ricky Batini with the daily reminder to live every day to its fullest. Tommy, thumbs up. We have Diego D, greatly appreciated. Sebastian Ferris, thumbs up and thank you. We have Boko Blin, greatly appreciated. Travis Quinn, thumbs up for that. There is Chalaco, thumbs up. Colin Reisner, greatly appreciated. Robbie Underwood, no crucifixions are necessary. Sullivan Atoms, Thank you very, very much, and 23 people left me comments. Thumbs up and thank you, each and every one of you. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. You get me out of my head, into the world, dealing with real people, if only a text, and definitely a thumbs up on that. If you could check out my various links down below, I have Twitter, Facebook, Patreon.com. If you could become a Patreon.com patron like one of these beautiful and awesome people, that would be beautiful and awesome and if you'd like to help me out without sending money through the patronage i have the paypal link down below and if you'd like to help me out without sending money at all i have an amazon wish list link as well which i've hopefully updated to have things like cat food hamster food hamster bedding uh there's also Reptisand, which might be on the list so if you could check that out that would be very very cool do not feel obligated i do not feel entitled and if you cannot donate, or you simply do not donate, I take all good wishes and I deposit them in the bank of my heart, or I draw interest, so thank you very much. And if you could toss me a like, I appreciate all the positive validation I get from my existence. Definite thumbs up, and of course, if you could hit the notification bell on the subscription button, that would be very cool. Greatly appreciated. A definite thumbs up for that. And of course, the duck head of scorn, even though it is looking off at an angle because I bunked into it and forgot to fix that. <laughs> even though it wears the great and powerful artifact, the lobster hat, and it wields its scorn like a weapon, its mockery is severe. It still wishes the best for us. It's just its primary method is negative reinforcement. Somewhere out there, the horse head of encouragement is attempting to regain its lost throne. So weather the storm, weather the storm. And of course, Black Lives Matter and stop Asian hate. Good golly, Miss Molly people. I mean, hopefully you're not out there you know, doing bad things, but you know, 
for those people that are, even though they're not watching, shame on them. And of course, during these very hard times, try your best to, to stay as safe and creative as is humanly possible. It is a good thing. So, if you don't have to go out, please don't go out. But if you do, wear a mask, wash your hands, try not to touch your face, maintain your social distancing. And if you haven't gotten a vaccine yet and you are eligible, please sign up and get one. As soon as I'm eligible, as soon as I can get one, I'm getting vaccinated. I'm still going to wash my hands. I'm still going to maintain my social distancing. I'm still going to be wearing a mask most of the time. But it's better than getting sick and gasping out the last of my life on a ventilator in a hospital in quarantine. So you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side. And that is a definite thumbs up.